Welcome to Card Player TV's Online Zone. My name is Julio Rodriguez, and today we have a very special guest for you. Otherwise known as Jovial Gent, Yevgeny Timoshenko, the 2009 World Championship of Online Poker winner. How are you doing, Yevgeny? Pretty good. How about yourself? I, I'm doing fantastic to talk to you. Now, you take down the WPT Championship, uh, one of the biggest tournaments of the year, about $2.1 million. I mean, I'm not saying this is topping that, but you took down the largest score in online history, $1.7 million. Do you just feel blessed at this moment? Do you feel like it's well-deserved, or uh, is it just all surreal? Yeah, it's a little bit surreal. I mean, even the best players can't really uh, imagine this happening to them. Not, to not just, you know, obviously you had to run good, but for your skill to take you so far in two major tournaments. Yeah, it, it was uh, it was definitely quite the accomplishment. Now, um, do you take any pride? Uh, I a lot of press was made about last year's uh, you know deal at the final table. Um, there's been a deal pretty much every year, you know, not allowing uh, some of the bigger scores to be made. Do you take pride in that, you know, that never really came up at the final table? Um, I, I guess so. It seemed to me that um, you and Daniel Kelly were pretty much dominating the final table bubble. Were people playing kind of scared? Yeah. I mean, it was a very big stage, so... Both of us had a very large chip lead at uh, our final two tables, and people definitely wanted to make the final table because once you make the final table, it's nine-handed, and play slows down a little bit, and the the pay jump, the, the money jumps are so huge that it, it really does pay to make the final table and be a part of history. Now, i got to ask you, uh, I know it's not likely since you – are a $2.1 million winner from the WPT Championship. But were you feeling any pressure to move up? Uh, you did have quite the lead. Did you feel like you could sit back and guarantee lock up $500,000 just risk-free? No, I, I never felt like that. Uh, at the start of the final table, with Ann Kelly having position on me, I expected him to play back at me a lot and apply a lot of pressure. So I started off playing pretty snug. And then as uh, players started busting, I, I realized that he wasn't playing back at me at all. So that allowed me to open up a little bit of hands and play more of my game and open more pots and play aggressively. Now, I did watch the final table replay on the WCOOP uh, website. There was a hand early on at the final table where you three-barreled a, uh, a player, I believe, Chong94. Chong94, yeah. And, uh, I mean, have you seen this hand? Were, were you surprised about what he laid down? Um. I mean, if you can just not, take us through the hand, that'd be great. Uh, sure. Well, I, I know Chong to be a good player, and I, I know he has uh, some friends that know my game pretty well. And I'm normally a pretty conservative, uh, solid player who doesn't run crazy bluffs. So I thought it was a pretty good spot to uh, to triple barrel, especially because um, when he check called on the turn, uh, I sort of pegged him for a one pair hand, and he, even though the king um, didn't really change anything because all the draws missed, I, I I just thought with an overbet he would give me a ton of credit and and wouldn't think that I I would be overbetting in this draw because because uh, because that that seems like such an obvious bluff spot you know you'd think most people would call but I thought he would think on the next level and actually give me credit and on top of that there were still a few stacks shorter than him if he folded. Uh, so, so I thought he there was a good chance that I'd get him to lay down a hand like he had a one pair hand. We're of course talking about Benjamin Lefeu, um, Chong ninety four, who held top pair in that hand. Now, when you when you put them all in on the river, did, were you pretty confident? Uh, there's just no way this guy can call his tournament life with top pair or a top pair on the flop, I should say. And um, especially when 
because you got you and Dan had had really dominated the final table bubble, there were so many short stacks at that final table. He could sit back, still have three million, and and easily pick up another couple hundred grand. No, I I wasn't supremely confident. Um, he could add King Jack or something, but I I still thought that like it was the right play and like it would uh, it would work a majority of the time. Now, of course, we have to talk about Daniel Kelly. He took out three players um, in pretty rapid succession. You took out one of them. Um, I mean, he was really threatening to go on a run uh, when he got a little unlucky against the flush draw. Uh, I, I, do you actively root against good players at the final table to make life a little easier for yourself? I always wondered if uh, if people do that. Um... No, not really. Uh, Dan's a friend of mine. I, it, when we got down to four-handed, I, I was actually rooting for the short stacks to bust, and I didn't really mind uh, who would bust them because I just wanted to get heads up because I feel like that's that's uh, my the biggest strength in my tournament game, and I, I would have I would felt pretty comfortable playing uh, Dan Kelly heads up pretty deep stacked. So it, I, I wasn't rooting. For, um, so I, I certainly wasn't rooting against Dan. It's, it was quite the opposite. Now it was kind of similar at the WPT Championship, when all of a sudden, uh, you know, you're you're pretty much stealing at will, and uh, you look up and all of a sudden two players are gone and you're heads up against the lone amateur at the table. Did you feel like this was like deja vu all over again? No, I, I didn't uh, didn't feel that way uh, because. Uh, Ready, evil, and you don't want it. Uh, played pretty well, I, I thought. Uh, yeah, I got to give him credit for navigating through through that massive field. Um, so I got to ask you. You know, you're you're the top earner of the year, pretty much. I mean, at, until the November nine gets all settled out. Uh, has life changed since the WPT championship, and even a couple days ago? Uh, you looking to buy the state of Washington, or uh, what's what's in store for Evgeny? Um, I think I'm gonna close out the year playing a lot of poker. Yeah, uh, the, cause, go ahead. I gotta say, you're the new player of the year uh, in our live race uh, for the for the uh, top honors, and you're also right up there in the online player of the year. Are these titles you're gonna try to achieve, or? You're just going to keep your head down and see what happens when when the dust settles. Yeah, I, I'm uh, I'm definitely going to play some more live tournaments this year. Uh, if I can string together a few more uh, scores and try to take this down. Okay, well, I, I got to root for you. Um, you know, I'll definitely be seeing you in, in London, and uh, hopefully you could uh, put the race out of reach there. Uh, thank you so much for being on the show with us today. Thanks a lot. And I'd like to thank you guys for watching the Online Zone right here on Card Player TV.